So good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. My name is Sandeep Yadav and I'm a Prime Minister's Research Fellow at Department of Energy Science and Engineering, IIT Bombay. And I'm taking this weekly live problem solving session for the course HS24 that is Energy, Resource, Economics and Environment. So today is the eighth week of this tutorial session. So in today's week we will cover the problems related to financing energy debt equity or source of funds innovative financing models and etc you also see the project feasibility and all other related things before that i will just cover up the uh, previous weeks quiz that is uh, pending so i start with the uh, solving the previous uh, previous week's quiz that's the week seven so week seven says uh, in that week uh the first question was uh, uh pure public goods are dash and dash so pure public goods are as we have uh, already seen in the previous uh classes it's a non excludable and the non rival it, they have two properties, non excludable and non rival So the option B will be the right option for that. I hope everything is clear. If you want more explanation, you can just go to this timestamp. You will follow the, all the other things. Uh, the question number two says a free COVID-19 vaccine dose is an example of excludable and rival, non excludable and uh, rival because uh, it. Uh, it's non-excludable because if, when we use uh, if someone is getting a dose because dose is limited, then someone somebody will uh, somebody uh, else will not get. That's that's why it's, it's called rival. Except liability. So now moving to the question number three. The individual demand curves of Rohit and Virat for the private goods are straight line. Uh, the following points reflect their marginal willingness to pay and the quantity demanded in rupees. So this is a numerical question. Uh, here it is the for the uh, we, uh, we can draw a line. For uh, Rohit and Virat. Yeah, so uh, P is equal to 300 minus 20 Q for the uh, uh, line for the Rohit and uh, P, P is equal to 200 minus 5 Q is the line for Virat. We can substitute P is equal to 100 because uh, it is given in that uh, point. We, are, we we need to know the price at 100 rupees. So when we P, uh, the Q for row it will be 10 and Q for Virat will be 20. So the total Q that is, uh, is asked what is the total quantity demanded. That will be around 30 rupees. I hope this is clear. Now moving to the question number four. That says in in the tragedy of commons, the concept of uh, by, by uh, the concept by Garrett Hardings, the word common denotes. Here the word common denotes by the openly accessible resources. It's a theory question, so it doesn't need any explanation. Now moving to the question number five. It says which of the following is an example of negative externalities? So negative externalities. First is the restoring historic monuments in India. Vaccination of frontline health workers against COVID-19. These both the two, uh, both of these options are positive. Third is significantly increasing increased use of highways by other motorists. It will uh, increase the power pollution levels. So it's a negative externality and the option number D is increase in government budget on higher education. That's also a positive externality. So here the explanation says an external externality uh, exists when the consumption or production choices of a person or firm enters the utility of an, another's entity without the entity's permission or, or compensation. So here the decisions of the motorist to signify uh, significantly increase the use of highways leading to more transit uh, time due to the heavy traffic also affect the pollution levels. 
Oh, now moving to the question number six. In the recent past, USA become net exporter from oil, net oil imported due to, and because they have found a shell gas. That's a shell gas traction technology. Uh, for that, they have, they have become the net oil exporter. Question number seven says, uh, it is difficult to achieve the Lendl's uh, equilibrium as it uh, requires different individual to pay different prices for same quantity of a good based on this margin of willingness to pay. The statement is true because uh, it is proposed by Norwegian uh, economist Eric Lendl. The Lendl equilibrium is based on the each consumer that it says each consumer is willing to pay. Adding up all the marginals, marginal willingness to pay, we, we, we get the total willingness to pay by quantity with the result, then we will get the equilibrium. So that statement is true. Now moving to the question number eight. Uh, for a public good, uh, the aggregate demand curve is obtained by. The aggregate, for the public good, as we have seen, the public uh, aggregate demand curve is uh, Obtained by summing up the marginal willingness to pay for each quantity. If you want more details, you can just go through this time snap. Now moving to the question number nine. Uh, which of the following is not an externality? Pollution caused by a power plant? No, it is a negative externality. Waste generated by a chemical plant is also a negative externality. Paper produced by a pulp and paper mill. It's not an externality it's a product nuclear radiation from a nuclear power plant it's also a negative externality and particular matter from a vehicle it's also a negative externality so option number c is the most feasible answer now moving to the final question according to the cost theorem discussed by the ronald cause in the problem of social costs proposed assignment of a property rights even when externalities are present will allow bargaining between parties such that efficient solution results based on the who, who holds the rights so that statement is false who holds the right is not an important for the outcome here in this statement the rest of all the statements is true so uh, i'm done with that uh, quiz 7 if any of you are facing any problem or have any doubts in the quiz 7 can still ask to clarify that otherwise I'll move to the this week's session. You can also write down your uh, doubts in the chat box if you have any. Otherwise, you can unmute yourself and you can talk. Okay, I hope this is clear. So just move so moving uh, before starting i'll just briefly discuss the content of uh, lecture number 16 because that's important to uh, cover up the topics that we are going to cover in the numericals so in this week the think someone is unmuted yes. I am so strong good sinner. It's here the test for a strong good sinner. I am strong So let's move to that. Uh, this week's content. So this week's content is mainly by the uh, methodology for the cost analysis, which include we can calculate the what is the uh, plant uh, based on the plant output capacity factor, plant efficiency, and they were what are the contents that are uh, there in the green and red. We can calculate the cost of generation. We can uh, for the solar uh, by the solar field efficiency or turbine efficiency. We can on uh, the plant efficiency operating our size. These are all the related terms that we can uh, calculate the. Uh, overall cost or the operating cost or total capital investment for the any of the plants. 
uh, so uh, next thing is the uh, after calculating the economic cost we need to finance the projects so finance the projects uh, includes two things one is risk and other thing is uh, returns risk is involves the credit risk or uh, such as the sponsors credit worthiness or commercial risk and uh, returns means a project cost how much it will out uh, how much will out uh, what is the how much will be in and the means of finance these are all things financing sources are that uh, that is means that acquisition of funds by borrowing a corporate or project loan or, or the leasing agreement we can uh, any of the company if needed the funds they can uh, do it by the debt or equity equity means uh, the selling its own share for the raising capital other thing is the government grants or guarantees so these are the financing resources that has covered so there's a risk return graph uh, for each of the project uh, this graph holds true that uh, if you will cross this line that that project says that it is not investable and if it will be below this uh, line, it will be investable project. So that's a very good uh, thing to uh, for the considering any companies that who want to invest in your project. So risk associated uh, with the uh, are the credit risk, uh, construction or the development risk, operating or uh, or the commercial risk, political, financial, regulatory environment, and the force measure. So these are the risks associated. Minute. Here also the, there are a few uh, dimensions are given for the corporate and the project finance. So these things are already covered in the theory part. So I'll not go, go through that. Also, this is an important uh, uh, table. Matrix for the financing instruments. It's it state the what are the types of loans like market based loans, soft loans, grants, equity, uh, guarantees, technical assistance, and others. Uh, how, which of these uh, companies can provide this kind of loans? Like uh, if you see National Development Fund or the Green in Investment can't uh, uh, provide you the equity investment or the other kind of investments. So these are the uh, based on the IEA reports of 2004. Now this is the whole theory parts are not so a project finance. A financing a project of a major independent capital investment that sponsoring company has a segregated from its asset and general purpose obligations. This is a definition given by the uh, Renet in the 1980. Also, if you will see this uh, graph, uh, it shows the funding sources on the different stages. Is that this this graph shows the technology readiness level? We also call it TRL. So if we'll see uh, in the initial uh, level of uh, your, your project uh, or uh, company's project at technology research level, only government's grants will provide us the fundings. And the, when we move forward, the technology development part, and then the venture capitalist and the private equity uh, funding agencies that comes to the picture. And when this this uh, technology is developed and it's uh, up for the manufacturing scale up. Then the public equity market or the mergers acquisitions uh, came into the pictures. And finally, the rollout or the asset finance, then we will create some company and that uh, asset is created, then the credit or debt market will open up. So uh, these are the definitions. And the, this is a uh, details about uh, explained by the server that the what was the green finance. So there are two public and the private uh, funds. So majorly dependent for the uh, public funds are the, for the carbon related market and the private funds are for the investment purpose, core protections, all these things. Now moving ahead, the global climate finance landscape. This all is covered, so I will not go through this. We'll just move ahead with. Uh, the, but uh, there's a few examples that has been studied in this. If you will see this area, uh, that's a uh, uh, Ahmedabad electricity company with the Saha uh, Prague uh, Limited. They have the for the capacitor leasing company. They are just providing some uh, costs associated with that. Like Ereda is 
providing loan to the uh, Saha Prague and for the equipment lease. And that some part of that is coming from the end user and that's going to the escrow account where the first uh, charge is taken by the editor and then uh, prices will uh, go to the Saha Prague finally and then there's an MOU between the AC and the SPRA. So you just uh, see there's a, uh, a good example of the capacitor leasing company. Uh, the similar is given for the financing through the utility bill, and this is covered by the government uh, policy that's uh, budget lamp user in which the LEDs, the old India level LED bulbs are replaced by, uh, re replaced uh, for the like of fluorescent bulbs. So that's an e energy efficient uh, scheme in which the target was the 400 billion bulbs and at the lower cost. Uh, same as the Selco case studies and the uh, DC power. So these are the all already explained. I will not go through that. Some tutorial problems that have been solved. So I'll solve some more problems for you so that you will get more clarity and the insights for the projects or uh, this course. Still, if you have any doubt, and clear. Otherwise, I'll go move ahead with problem solving session. If you have any doubt, you can ask. So I shall move. Sir, hello. Yeah. Yes. Um, is it that Bachat lamp Yojana is related to replacement of existing incandescent lamp with LEDs, or it is initially uh, taken as a, a replacement of incandescent lamp uh, in terms of CFL lamp? Because it is at the time of when that this budget lab uh, initiative was created in mid of 2014 to uh, 12 to 13, then there is a not such a markets of LED in India. Most of hmm. it is CFL. So whether it is ultimate target is LED or it is CFL. It's initially uh, started with the CFL program, but when the LEDs came into the picture, there's a more energy efficient and the more stable options, and they, they're most Cost effective, so they have just moved to the this kind LED. of uh, LEDs. Correct. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. If you want some more details, I've just uh, there's a state uh, uh, there's a more report available that by the B Triple If you see this uh, uh, reference, you can go through this link. This PPT is already shared. Then you will find all the details when the project timeline has started and other things are related to this project. OK, uh, so we'll move ahead. So. Next. Uh, begin with uh, question number one. Uh, start with the we'll start with the short questions first. That includes uh, mostly the uh, theoretical part. Uh, so first question says a comparison of debt and equity costs in India and US for energy project discussed in the course shows that option number one uh, cost of debt and equity are similar in both the countries. Cost of debt is, is higher in the US than India. Cost of debt is lower in US than India or none of the above. If you want to uh, try this question, you can just answer your comment, your answer in the chat box. I'm seeing this. Anybody? OK. So a comparison of debt and equity is uh, discussed by the sir also. So it says that the cost of debt is lower in US than in India. So for the energy projects, if you want to uh, any company want to pursue, so cost of debt is lower in uh, US than in India. 
Okay, so let's move to the question number two. Which of the following is not an example of financing instruments? Multilateral development banks, soft loans, market based loans, or grants? This is covered in the uh, slides. I'll just go through. If you, if you are just catching up, you can just go through. And uh, anybody who wants to try this, you can almost welcome. So, first option was the cost of debt is uh, lower in India, uh, low, lower in US. And the second one is the multi. Lateral development bank. If you go, uh, if you go through, uh, if you will go through this, we'll see. So this was the slide. Yes, so if you will see here, uh, the question was asked that which of the following is not an example of financing instrument. So here soft loans was uh, the option. Market based. Loans is also an, a financing instrument, as you can see here. Yes, as you can see, market based options are a financing instrument. Soft loans are also a financing instrument as well as the grants. Only the multilateral development banks are not a. Uh, instrument of the financial but these are the uh, uh, loan providing agencies so hope this is clear so the right option will be the multilateral development banks is not an example of financial instrument we we'll move ahead select an appropriate option which arranges following cooking mechanism in decreasing manner of stove efficiency. So as you as you know, uh, what equipment is showing the maximum efficiency and to minimum efficiency, we just need to rearrange. So first option is the traditional stove, a uh, charcoal stove. That's also an inefficient uh, technology. And uh, second is the LPG stove. That's also an efficient technology. Electric hot plate. It's also an uh, efficient technology kerosene wick stove or animal dung in the traditional soap. So the uh, from the options it is clear that traditional charcoal stove and uh, animal dance are the most uh, least uh, efficient products. Anybody wants to try this? Uh, someone is commenting D. Uh, so we have to arrange uh, the options from maximum to minimum so if you are targeting traditional and these these will be the minimum so uh, when which of the option is uh, having one and five in the last will be the right option here so if you will see it says e because one and five will be the least so uh, let's go through this so highest will be electric hot plate electric hot plate is, is the most efficient followed by LPG stove and then followed by kerosene wick stove followed by traditional charcoal and finally animal dung. So one thing if you will notice in that these are the technologies that is uh, in, the, in the increasing or order of their existence. First thing was existed is the animal dung. Second followed by the uh, then comes to the traditional charcoal based stoves. Then the kerosene wick stove. Then the more uh, identity has developed, and we have developed the LPG stove, and finally the electric hot plate. So if you will see, uh, the animal dung was the five, and uh, uh, will be the one kerosene was the fourth LPG stove is two and electric plate is 
So right option will be E. I hope this is clear. So let's move ahead to question number four. So this is just we have discussed. Choose the correct option to complete the capacitor leasing business framework. That's between the Ahmedabad Electricity uh, Company and uh, Saha Smart Limited SSL. And here it, it, we have seen that a loan is provided to the uh, SSL by the Ereda, and then uh, they have they will give the equipment on the lease to the end user, and the end user will give some amount of uh, will get some benefit uh, in the uh, decrease in the electricity bill for the. AEC and they will get the electricity. And there is an MOU between the AEC and SSN with the uh, all the amount will go to the this account. So what was the, the, this account? A third party agency, special purpose uh, vehicle, escrow, commercial bank, government and the investment fund. So that account was escrow account. So first right in that escrow account was for the Ereda. Ereda will take its part and then uh, other part will be go to the SSL, will, which will they will use for the their repayment of their loan and their profit. Hope you remember the slide that we have just covered. Just show it to you. So if you have seen this one. This was the thing that we have covered. So let's move ahead. Right option will be the escrow. Let's move ahead to the question number five. Which investor has the highest expectation of returns? Development bank. Large corporates, venture capitalist, or mutual funds. So, as we know, the mutual fund is the least uh, expectation of the returns, as these all are the other things, and the development bonds also. So, highest, uh, uh, which of the uh, highest expectation of the returns will be venture capitalist. Now, to move question number six. Uh, the target returns of venture capital are higher than the mutual fund or the retail investor. As we have seen, if they are getting more uh, returns, that's very obvious. If they are getting more returns in the mutual funds or the retail investor, why will they will uh, risk their money to the uh, like fund? New startup or new uh, te technology, uh, they will just play safe and invest in the mutual funds. So that means that they are having the higher returns rate. So that will be the correct option. Um, move to the question number seven. A comparison of debt and equity cost in India and the US project shows that the cost of Debt and equity are similar in both the countries. So this we have already covered. The cost of debt is lo lower in US than India. It's a bit of question by mistake. Now moving to the question number eight. According to the BNEF report, Dash Technologies technology added higher net capacity adding during 2009 to 2019. So if you remember, I'll just go through this graph. So according to the BNF report, solar was the technology. Solar, solar was the technology added the highest net capacity during the 2009 and 2019. I'll just go through this for that. That will give you more clarity. You remember this one? BNF report.
so here if you will see in the 2019 report the uh, solar solar was showing the highest uh, net renewable investment as a 1349 uh, trillion dollars uh, and if you will see the increase during the 2019 the solar is showing the around 638 units of increment as compared to the hydro wind and gas and coal so that's what it was asked in the 2009 to 19 the which of the technologies has the highest capacity addition so i hope this is clear to you now moving ahead which of the following is an example of project finance First one is a project funding. Uh, funding of salaries of a company, funding of electricity expenses of a company, funding the outstanding loans or deficit of a company, funding uh, of a rooftop EV power plant, or none of the above. Anybody wants to give a try? So if you see the project finance, these are all the basic uh, funding of salaries of the company's employees are the basic expenditure of the company. So that will not a uh, funding of electricity bill is the basic expense. Funding of outstanding loans and deficit of companies not in project finance. You can't uh, take a finance, but the funding of a rooftop PV uh, project is a project. Example of a project finance. Moving to the question number 10, a company is planning to take a loan for an energy project. Which of the following does the loan repayment does not depends on? So a company has taken a loan. Suppose a company has taken a loan for an energy project. Now we have to find which of the following does not affect the loan repayment interest rate. Ten year the duration. No, this will uh, affect. Ten duration is also affect. Amount of loan definitely, but discount rate does not affect the loan repayment. So that will be the right option here. So when we solve this numerical question, you will get these questions very easily because uh, you will get some uh, more insights. So now we are moving ahead. Uh, question number eleven says. If a bank is financing a large project of a reputed corporate, which of the following is true? Risk would be same for for non resource and resource funding. Risk would be greater for resource funding. Risk would be lesser in the recourse funding. So <laughs> in this, if a bank is financing a large project of a reputed corporate, then uh, there will be less risk associated with the recourse funding. So option number C will be right option. Now moving ahead. The majority of uh, sir. Yes, sir. The recourse funding uh, uh, clarify this. Recourse funding means. Uh, Give me a. Let's see here, yeah, recourse funding. So uh, here I'm not able to find in the slides, but basically recourse funding is was the uh, term that is associated with that the, when a company is giving you the some amount of loan and they will take some guarantees uh, uh, against 
that loan so that uh, recourse loan allows that company or lender properties to pursue their additional assets to borrowers if the borrowers is not able to pay that uh, loan amount then they can claim the addition uh, on the uh, other than the guaranteed uh, uh, properties they can uh, also take the property uh, rights on the other assets of the of that of that company so that's how uh, it's it will uh, it says if i'll see in the slides i will just definitely go through that so uh, if you understand if a company is providing the records funding then the risk associated will be the less because if that that company is uh, still uh, defaults you can still uh, uh, recover these uh, loans from the their assets that uh, you will hold some rights is it clear yes sir yes sir yes okay yeah so let's move the uh, move to the question number 12 the majority of climate fund investment has been for adaptation mitigation waste management or carbon capture or storage we have just covered that uh, climate investment fund or the green fund the green fund these are majorly related to the carbon capture storage and mitigation so if you uh, brief, uh, brief this all this so these all things are for the mitigation purpose if you will remember there was a example of we have taken a green finance that was for the mitigation so i'll show you this was the slides that was asked for yeah so mitigation if you will see here uh, the most of the green finance are the taken for the public funds are taken uh, for the mitigation purpose or the climate related if you will see carbon uh, market revenues or carbon related taxes or the general taxes public funds are mostly for the policy initiatives uh, or the grants are for the mitigation purpose only uh, on the other hand the private funds which will include the institutional institutional investors project developers and these are mainly for the project level debt market or equity level balance financing uh, these are uh, only for the adaptation purpose so this is for the mitigation so question number 30 Just give me a minute. You can just still try these two questions. What are the sources of majority renewable energy finance? So, uh, let's move ahead. What are the sources of majority of renewable energy finance so corporate and government r&d will not be a part of it only the public market and the asset so in that also asset finance will be the most accurate option these are all things are covered in the theory part if you'll go through this if you have more explanation about this you can just go through this uh, theory parts of the videos in the lecture 16a or 16b you will go so uh, will get all these understandings from this yes, similarly if you go to this question of 40 which investors have the highest expectation of returns that is venture capitalists we just covered it i think this is repeated by mistake now oh, moving question number 15 for a long term project with relatively low returns which investor is most more likely to invest hedge fund insurance companies large corporates or private equity uh, so here two terms long term project with with relatively low returns 
in these cases when the terms uh, comes in the long terms and the low returns only insurance companies will be interested finally which of the technology received the largest share in investment in the 2018 we have just covered solar solar has uh, received the uh, largest around uh, 1349 Now finally, uh, moving to the final question of the sh uh, short types, a comparison of debt and equity cost in India and the, uh, this is already covered, so let's discuss it again. Now, if you have any, any doubt in the short types of questions, you can just ask me, otherwise we move to the numerical type questions. You see the chat box if there are any questions. Okay, I hope everything is clear till now. So I'll move ahead. With question number one. These are the these are the type of questions that will you will get in the uh, numerical part of the your quizzes and the final exams also. So first question says a solar power plant of five megawatt. Now capacity of the plant was given. 5 megawatt solar has a capital cost is of 15 crores calculate the annualized capital cost in the in the crores for life of 25 years so life is t was given or we can say n n is given 25 years c not was given 15 crore discount rate was given 30 percent we can write it 0 0.3 now we have to calculate the annualized cost in crores so first we have to calculate crf that's capital recovery factor so crf was or we can also we will also call it a annualization factor so it is calculated as d into 1 plus d to the power n we also covered this in the uh, i think lecture number 1 or 2 and uh, 1 plus d to the power n minus 1 so we will put these values in this uh, you will calculate you will be able to calculate the crf Now, if you will see uh, CRF, D is equal to 0 0.3 into D plus 1 is 1.3 to the power 25, and then 1 plus D is again 1.3 to the power 25 minus 1. So CRF will be, if you will calculate, Zero point three into one point three to the power twenty five divided by one point three to the power twenty five minus one. So that will be around zero point three zero zero. So that's a CRF. So for this uh, annual annualized capital cost, annualized. Capital cost will be CRF into initial investment. The CRF is we have just calculated 0 0.3 into initial investment was given uh, 15 crore. 15 crore. So if you will multiply both of these things, it com comes out to be around 4.5 crores. I hope this is clear to all of you. If you have still facing any problem, you can just let me know. First, we got the uh, CRF. We also call it as annualization factor. 
then we go through the uh, just multiplied it with the initial cost or capital uh, cost to get the annualized cost. But this uh, this uh, uh, easy question for the uh, to begin with. Now moving ahead, if you don't have any doubt. Okay. We'll move ahead to the question number two. It says a PV plant, PV photovoltaic power plant in India has a capacity of 200 megawatt. The capital investment is 6,000 crores, assuming a capacity factor of 17.5% with a power purchase agreement guaranteeing a price of rupees 3.5 rupees per kilowatt hour that's a per unit cost assuming a lifetime of 25 years neglecting OLM cost answer the following questions what are the internal rate of return in of the project the internal rate of return is so let's solve this So calculating the internal rate of return, we need to go through this question in the Excel sheets, so or you can just write manually also. But it will need some more things. So first thing we will calculate is the capacity. Capacity is given. 200 kilo uh, megawatt total capital investment TCI is given 6000 crore capacity factor was given 17.5 percent also write it 0.175 per unit price size of electricity is given 3.5 rupees per kilowatt hour that's a per unit price lifetime that is n is 25 years and uh, we have just we have to just calculate the what is irr So let's begin with first we'll calculate the annual cash flow. Annual cash flow is what is the amount of uh, money that we are generating from this power plant. First thing is will be we 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 know the capacity of plant. Capacity is uh, capacity we can just denote by the C. That will include the C. It's a uh, multiplied by number of operating hours. So in the annual, if you will see uh, annual operating hours, operating hours will be eight seven six zero hours. So if you multiply three sixty five into twenty four, that will come out to be around eight seven six zero hours. So that's how it came. If anyone is Doubting that fib. So we are considering a it's working 24 to 7, but at the same time, we are also taking the capacity factor. And that means at what time of this hours that because it's a solar plant, so we need to consider that only 17% of this time will be. This plant will be uh, able to work due to the sunlight and the other uh, clouding and the weather conditions. 
so that will include 8760 into capacity factor into per unit price electricity price so if you will see capacity was given uh is given in this question 2000 2000 into 1000 because it's it was given in the megawatts you have to just convert it into, into the kilowatts so and number of operating hours is 8760 capacity factor was 0 0.175 price of electricity was given 3.5 because check this unit this will be kilowatt into r into that's a unit less and that is the kilowatt r per sorry rupees that was the unit of that was rupees per kilowatt hour then we'll see then this kilowatt r will cancel out the whole unit of this will be rupees only that's just for the information purpose what the we are doing it right so finally if you will multiply all these you will get around 2000 to 1000 into 8760 into 0 0.175 into 3.5 so that comes out to be 1.0731 into 10 raised to power 10 rupees if you would convert it into the crores, just divided 10 to the power 8. Oh, that was uh, 7. So that comes around to 5. So this is the, the, the rupees annual. And then we got it, the annual cash flow now uh, for calculating the IRR IRR was the term that how much money we will get back per year that uh, will if you will convert this uh, 1.07 into 3 into 10 raised to power 10 rupees divided by the initial investment that we have uh, put that is around 6000 crores just a minute If we'll just convert this thing into the crores, that comes out to be around 1073 crores. So we just converted the units, nothing else. So it's easy for the calculation 1073. Similar thing that's already in the crores. So if you will solve this, this comes out to be 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus IRR to the power 25. So initially, if we assume IRR is equal to 0 0.2, that is equal to 20%. If you will assume IRR is equal to 20% and put that back into that equation 1, Twenty percent, then we will get IRR is equal to mm, these are all things. And uh, first iteration after putting this IRR, we will finally get uh, IRR is equal to seventeen point six nine percent. And again, we will put this into again after putting. 
uh, IRR is equal to uh, 17.69 into equation one. Again, if you will put this into the equation one, we'll again get some value. And then after so many iteration, after few more iterations, We will get IR is equal to 17.57%. So that's more easy if you will solve the uh, calculators or uh, the things in manually. Manually also you will get uh, result in the few iterations. But then you will uh, you are going to solve the large uh, larger questions. So it's better to use MS. Office or MS Excel. I hope this is clear. If anyone is having any doubt, you can ask. So I hope this is clear. Uh, yes, you don't have any doubts. We'll move ahead to a uh, question uh, number three. It says a project has an investment initial year rupees 30 lakhs. That's we call it initial investment. C naught is equal to 30 lakhs. If other constant annual cash flows uh, are 10 lakhs the project life is 10 years calculate the net present value of the now we have to calculate the npv npv of the project assume that the discount rate is uh, so we have to calculate the npv here the discount rate is given 20% Okay, so we have to calculate the NPV. Let's start. In this case also, we have to first calculate the CRF. CRF, as we know, is D into 1 plus D to the power N into 1 plus D. Sorry. 1 plus d to the power n minus 1. We'll put all these values in the CRS section. We will get zero point two one to one point two to the power n n is equal to ten in one point two to the power. 10 minus 1. To solve this, we'll get 0 0.2 into 1.2. 10 divided by 10. Yes. So we will get CRF is equal to 0 0.2385. So now for getting the CRF or we also call it as a annual lie factor. Now for the NPV, NPV is equal to initial investment that is C naught minus C naught plus annual 
cash flow or we can say uh, cash flow C1. Or kind of CF divided by CRF. So now we know for the NPV, C0 we know that's a 20 lakhs. So let's write the minus 20. Annual cash flows is 10 lakhs. CRF we have just calculated 0 0.2385. We'll put all these values and solve this. We'll get 10 divided by. Right, right, this minus 20. So we'll get NPV is equal to 21.92 lakhs. That's how we can calculate the NPV of any project if all the other terms are given. I hope this is clear. You are not having any doubt, just move ahead. Or if you have any doubt, you can ask. OK. Sir, what is that? Sir, sir, what is that C0? C0 is the initial investment. That's uh, C0, but, C0, 30 lakhs is given. But, but, your calculations, there is something my 20. How 20 comes from? Oh, sorry, it's, yeah, yeah, thank you. I just made a mistake. It comes out to be minus 30, then it will be around uh, minus 30, then it will be 11 point. Yeah, thank you for pointing out. OK, thanks. Let's move ahead. So we'll solve this question later on. We'll just move ahead to that next one. Because it's a similar type of question. Now, sir, what is CF? CF, CF? CF is what the? Is CF, one second, sir. Uh, CF, huh, sir. CF is the, the uh, annual annual cash flow. Cash flow. CF. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this question will leave. Uh, you can take it as a homework also. Or you can solve it. If you are not able to solve it, we'll solve it in the next class of if the of the time permits. Uh, we'll solve it in the end time class because this is the combination of all, all the questions that we have covered. We have to calculate the IRR that we have just calculated. We need to know the debt equity and the uh, uh, we have to again find the IRR here also. And uh, other things, all the things that we have to calculate the IRR into, into the di different forms. So you will first try it yourself. Otherwise, I'll solve it in the next class. We move to the this type of question because we have limited time. We just wanted to give them more uh, different type of questions that will give you more practical knowledge. So this question says a uh, coal based power plant requires 147 terajoules of energy for construction and 20 terajoules of energy for dismantling. Dismantling means uh, when we make a project and we just after after the life cycle is has ended, we have to just dismantle that project. So that also requires some amount of energy. So that is given here. In the its life of 40 years, it requires around a total of 83 beta joules for operation and maintenance, and produces a total 946 beta joules of energy in its whole lifetime. Now we have to calculate the energy return on investment and energy payback time. So 
to begin with v node we'll call it one uh, plants uh, construction energy so construction energy we can write ec is equal to 147 tera joules other thing is the dismantling energy so we can write it ed as 20 tera joules life cycle is given for years energy in onm is given 83 petajoules you should just remember the units also and energy that is generated is given as 946 petajoules now we have to calculate the eroi and energy payback times so we know ero i is equal to overall energy generated divided by ec plus eonm plus ed so when we see uh, put the values eg is given 946 so we'll convert them into the same unit we'll multiply at 10 to power 3 and uh, 147 was given in the terajoule itself so we'll not need to convert onm onm was given 83 so we have again convert it into the terajoules and ed was given 20. so when we will put all these values you will get around uh, 946000 divided by 147 plus 8300 plus 20. It comes out to be 11.374. So, yeah. The first thing is comes out to be uh, energy return or investment will be 11.374 now moving ahead second thing is energy payback time so its formula is ec that is energy in construction divided by eg minus e o n m divided by n so n also we know ec is 147 eg eg is uh, 946 into 10 to power 3 minus 83 o n m into 10 to power 3 divided by 40 if we'll put all these values you will get value around 0 0.007 that's energy payback time so in that way we have calculated both of these things that's uh, uh, basically a formula based i don't think anyone is having any doubt in that question because we have just put the well uh, values in this formulas and got these values so this is how you can calculate the energy payback period time and uh, energy return on investments now moving to a question number three i hope this is clear okay. now question number three says in mumbai uh, expected daily average global radiation that's uh, talking about the solar radiation is around 18.25 megajoules per meter square a 40 kilowatt uh, pv based uh, 
power plant is installed with an expected life of 30 years. The expected efficiency of the plant is 17 percent. And it is estimated that 2500 megajoule per uh, meter square of energy is required for the construction and decommissioning of the plant. The expected performance ratio of, of the plant is 0.7. The life cycle energy efficiency of the grid in Mumbai is 40 percent. Determine the EROI in the electricity units and determine the EOI in the primary energy equivalent and uh, determine the APBT in the plan. So I hope you understand the question. First thing. We have to calculate the. So here it is given. A average global radiation where we can also call it as a. Irradiation. Irradiation is given 18.25 megajoule per meter square and is given 30 years. Efficiency is given 17%. EC was given around 2500. Megajoule per meter square. Performance ratio PR. Was given 0 0.7. And generation or grid efficiency we can also call it and. Grid is equal to 0 0.4. Now energy price we can calculate EP. Is around. 18.25. Multiplied by 365 days into 30 years energy produced. We can calculate to the whole life as we have uh, calculated here in the previous question. That's already given here. Energy generated, or we can call it energy produced also. But e G 30 into 0 0.17. If we multiply all these, we will get around P3 972.375. Now, lifetime output. Of that plant will be 33. 972.375. You can also write it three three nine seven three that will be equal to sorry. Sir, is there is twenty four in is will be multiplied in this uh, figure in this equation? Twenty four for twenty four hours. If you consider 365, then it is 24 will become in this. No, we are just calculating the energy generated in the year and not in the. We are not considering the unit electricity. When okay, we need sir. to calculate the unit electricity, that is megawatt hour or kilowatt hour. Here we are considering the megajoules. Megajoules. So that's okay. why we are not multiplying. But that's, okay. I hope you get okay. it. 3.73 into 0.7 because here it is given the efficiency like uh, performance ratio is 70 percent so we have to just multiply it finally we will get is a 23780 or round off correct if you will round off that will be 13. now we know the lifetime output we can calculate the eroi that's the first thing that's asked in the primary energy equivalent can calculate EROI primary energy equivalent energy PE that is around 23781 divided by energy consumed that is so 
2500 that is given here you just that comes out to be 9.512 so first thing we will calculate we have just uh, evaluated the energy return on investment in the primary energy equivalent form now we will calculate the energy payback period time for the plant in days Uh, sorry, uh, there's a mistake. Uh, we have just calculated here that is electricity wise because uh, that's an amount of energy uh, returned on the electricity wise. If you were to convert EROI, like plant electricity uh, PE basis, that is the uh, primary energy, we have to just do this 9.512 divided by 0 0.4 because uh, get efficiency is 40 percent then it comes out to be around 23.78 so that will be the x now we'll move ahead the energy payback time in the days that's uh, we know the construction time or the that energy will divide this thing will will rightly just be a total lifetime output that is around two three seven eight one divide by 30 as lifetime is given 30 so it comes out to be 3.1538 that's in the years format because here we have considered years so if you multiply this by the days then it comes out to be around 1151.1 or we can just round it off because days can't be the, the fraction 52 Days. The previous question also we calculated this. This is in the years because you have considered here years. I hope this is question is also clear. If you are facing any doubt, you can ask. Sir, once again, go the previous slides, sir. Yes. Uh, these calculations okay. so uh, these calculations sir so yeah. uh, uh, this is the, the last one is uh, the um, roi related to the grid electricity yes yes so that says means uh, if the grid electricity is uh, grid uh, efficiency is 40 percent that means mm. it, that much the electricity we have generated mm. okay and now yes, we have yes. to see the what is the primary energy that is consumed. If you will see the grid, uh, like electricity basis, if you if you wanted to find how much electricity actually generated, so we have to just divide it by the uh, the grid efficiency. That is sixty percent is lost into the grid itself. So to get the hundred percent of that energy, we just need to divide that by 0.40 percent. So that means that twenty three point seven it is actually mm -hmm. generated out of that sixty percent is gone in the grid. So that's called primary energy efficiency, or we can say the, the what is the primary energy consumed with that. You'll see primary energy equivalent. That means 40% was the efficiency of the grid. So actually it was it was generated or uh, uh, EROI on the has calculated as a uh, we have to divide that uh, to calculate what is the actual amount, we need to divide that by and create efficiency. That's why it comes out to be 23.78. Is, is it clear? So can you move question yes. number three? Question number three. Yeah, that was the question number three only. No, sir, not tutorial question. 
then we try. Before that, before that, question number three. Before that, just a minute. Sir, numerical, numerical, yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Sir, initial investment is rupees 30 lakh, but in the NPB you have written minus 20. How it's come minus 20? No, 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 I've just Next collected slide. it. Yeah, it's I've collected already. Okay, okay, sir. Initially it was 20. Sir, can you ask me question number two? Yes, sir. Uh, this one or the numerical or the tutorials? This one, this one, sir. This one. Okay, here it says a PV plant in India. This one, no? Oh, the th this question says a PV plant in India has a capacity of 2000 megawatt and the capital investment of 6000 crores. So, assuming that uh, there's a capacity factor, these are all the terms that is given. Like primarily, like electricity price, number of years, and operating hours. So operating hours we have to calculate by the multi time 365 days, which 24 hours. So if we are considering a, that plant is working 24 to uh, 7, but we need to consider the uh, the plant's capacity factor that is given as 17.5. Now first thing we have to calculate is annual cash flows. Annual cash flows referred as how much uh, money we will be generating by uh, by selling that electricity so we know electricity price that will be the base for the selling the electricity 3.5 rupees per kilowatt hour now we have to calculate how much electricity that we can generate so we know our plant size is 2000 megawatt but electricity price is given in the kilowatt hour so we have to convert the 2000 to 1000 now this whole things will be kilowatt and we, we have to multiply by the 8760 that is the operating hours but on the same time we have to consider the plant capacity factor that is 17.5 uh, percent so we are also multiplying this so now if you will see the unit wise that is in the kilowatt that is in the r that's unit less that's in the rupees per kilowatt hour so finally we will the, the only thing remaining is the rupees so that's how annual cash flows we have calculated around 1073 crore rupees now the thing that are asking the internal rate of return so we know internal rate of return for the k plus one period is annual Cash flows divided by the initial cost multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus 1 by R. So that's the equation that consider that, that having the IR on the both the sides. So that is the equation that we can't solve the, from the non normal mathematics. But for that, we have to assume that internal rate of return. We, have to, we can assume that any of the values. So here I'm assuming 20%. So if you'll put that 20% into that equation one, that then if you will consider 20% and 1073 divided by 6000, and if you will consider one minus one by 1.2 to the power 25, 25 years we consider, then it comes out to be 17.69%. Again, uh, because it's an iterative method, we need to go more closer and closer to the answer. Again, we will put this thing into the equation one. Then we will get after some doing this much of iterations, we'll move to that IRR uh, around 17.5. When we uh, see 17.57, uh, suppose the answer of this. Uh, question uh, like uh, iteration or like putting this value into the equation one was 17.57 of uh, 58 then it comes out to be 17.575 then it comes out to be 17.57 so that's an iterative method in that way, finally after few iteration we will get this value Is it clear? Okay, sir. 
Anyone else having any doubt? In any of the questions till now? So if you just solve this uh, energy return on the primary energy equivalent. And uh, let's move to the question number. One more question that's around question number. What was that? Three. So we'll move to the question number four. I just not named it. Name it at four. Here it says, it's an interesting question. It says a person is planning for his retired life. He has 10 more years. It's 10. 10 more years of service. He would like to deposit around 8,500 at the end of first year. And thereafter, he wishes to deposit an amount of amount with an annual decrease of 500 rupees for the next nine years. With an interest of 15%, find the total amount of amount at the end of 10th years of series. The first is uh, that annual deposit was given. So you'll see. Annual deposit even we, we call it even even was eight thousand five hundred rupees. G G means the after first year uh, amount of decrease decrease is around five hundred rupees. Interest rate is fifteen percent and lifetime is ten years. Now we have to calculate the amount, total amount. at 10th year okay so if you will draw a uh, time value of uh, uh, time value series here if you will draw here that was 0th year that was 10th year so first year is depositing 8500 second year he was depositing 500 less that is around 800 8000 then again 7500 and again fourth year 7000 and that's just as so in that way 10th year he will only deposit 4000 rupees so here from this figure we can calculate a that is total amount of money that he saved throughout the years will be equal to a1 this is a1 a2 a3 a10 and on the top of that interest rate was given 15 percent a1 a2 a3 till a10 Again, uh, because A will be equal to. So if you write into the mathematical terms, it will around by calculating the interest period will come around. Eight thousand five hundred minus five hundred in each year is uh, a by g. We have to calculate fifteen 
percent for the 10 years. Now, if you solve this, it will be around 5,500. A was so 15 percent, it comes out to be around 3.38. To add up this thing, this will 6808. That means this is the amount that we are getting. Is there any problem? You can see my screen. I hope you know, I lost you. There's some problem from the man. Let me just fix it. Yes. I hope you can see now. So it comes out to be around. So that means that much amount of money uh, after interest is getting it uh, overall. So this is equivalent. This is equivalent for paying an equivalent amount of 6,000 at the end of every year for the next 10 years. The future worth of some of this Levi's series is 10th year will be. The future worth will be. So that, that, that is the amount invested. So future worth will be A into F by A. So interest period and N. That will be equivalent to 6,080.40. Eight, Rupees into twenty twenty zero four comes out to be around one lakh thirty eight thousand two thirty eight rupees. So finally concluding at the end of tenth year. The total compound amount of all his payment will be one lakh thirty eight thousand two thirty eight rupees. I hope this is clear. We're facing any difficulties. So we'll move ahead uh, to uh, question number five. It says an engineer has two bits for an elevator to be installed in a new building. The details of these bits for the elevator are as follows. So there are 
two builders. One is alpha elevator. Second is the beta elevator. Initial cost is for four lakh fifty thousand rupees for the alpha one and the similar to all acceptable. Service life is fifteen years. Annual operation maintenance cost is. Uh, so here we can see alpha elevators and the beta elevator. So alpha is a uh, cheaper option we can uh, see from the beginning. Uh, it's asking determine which bit should be accepted based on the present worth method of comparison, assuming 50% interest rate, 15% interest rate compounded annually. Okay. So let's see. OK, let's go one by one. So. First we will see bid number one that is. Alpha elevators. So initial cost. Was given for like 50. Thousand rupees. Annual operation and maintenance was given twenty seven thousand. Life and is fifteen. Yes, so that's all we will draw that. You will see that. Cash flow diagram, then we can see. So for the zeroth year, it's around they're putting around four four like fifty thousand rupees of investment, then annually twenty seven. 27 and till the 15th year. So because it's having life of 15 year. So that will be the cash flow diagram. So if you see the present worth. Present worth. Of the. Above. Cash flow diagram. That will be equal to at the fifteen percent. Four lakh fifty thousand plus twenty seven thousand annually at the interest rate of fifteen percent to fifteen years. So that will be equal to if we solve this, is it just come and we'll add up this rupees six lakh seven thousand. Eight at rupees. So similarly, this is for the bid one. Similarly, for the bid two, initial for the bidder two. 
Sir, please go the second um, slide. Yes, this one. No, sir. The this this is the second. Yes, yes, yes. This this one. Okay. Sir, what is P by A? That means you have to uh, like P is the initial period and interest rate. So if you will see the, uh, we will solve this equation for the 15 percent and the 15 years, and okay. it it will gives give us some factors like CRF we are, we are just used to calculate when the, yeah. the interest rate and life. Similarly, we'll calculate this. Okay, okay. Now moving to the bit two. Uh, similarly, initial investment. Was given for this five lakh forty thousand rupees and. Uh, annual one numbers. Twenty eight thousand five hundred rupees. Similarly, for if you draw a cash flow. For the fifteen years, zero one. So initially it will be five like forty thousand and then twenty eight thousand five rupees. Now, similarly, we can, will calculate the present worth at 15%. Comes out to be at 15% and 15 years. So it will come out to be. If you solve this, you will get a value of 5.84. It's similar because uh, both the time period and the interest rate is same for both the bidders. So it will be same as the previous one. Now, if you add up these things, it comes out to be 7,6651 rupees. Bid two. So now it is clear from the bid one and the bid two, the total uh, for the bid one is less. Bid one is lesser than the bid two. So bid two will bid one will be the most feasible option to choose. So in that case, we can initially see the from this question itself. That uh, if the interest and the lifetime is same, then uh, initial investment of that alpha elevator is also less, and uh, sir, annual operation is also is less. Sir. sir, yes, yes. Sir, one question is there in present scenario when we um, uh, evaluating the bids. Um, then the one thing is there if um, certain person A um, is uh, providing something in rupees uh, 10,000 and other is uh, giving it 7,000. In to some extent, we see that that 7,000 is most reliable to opt for that particular bids. But um, okay. at the same time, we have to uh, consider about that quality also. So um, it is uh, whether that particular uh, party uh, can fulfill his uh, commitment or whether that uh, material supplied by him is um, very much um, in service for this period, long period of time. So 
is it uh, is there is any quantity uh, quality factors is there because in our day to day bidding process we are thinking that the way that that party is able to perform that uh, job or not in present yeah, scenario about, uh, de- yeah there's some more detailed uh, uh, things that you need to carry out initially if you'll uh, see the cost wise so there are two yeah. things one is the cost and second is the quality so yeah. here we are calculating the economics part of this uh, and the co- if you see the quality wise then the quality wise there are all other factors uh, that are included in the policy parts what is the the uh, like uh, you yeah. know there there are some ratings when you apply when any of this uh, companies applies there's uh, always there is a rating of this company that is delivered on this their past work that they have done so these mm-hmm. things are also considered like what kind of work that's completed or what kind of experience that that, that they're having so mm-hmm. based on these activities also the uh, final uh, evaluation of the project is also estimated if you consider the quality part okay and in this question if you uh, if you see initially it is uh, uh, we can see that initial cost and the annual operation and maintenance cost is lower for the alpha elevators but if you will change this uh, you, you can try doing by yourself if you will change this 27 to 30000 then you will see or 35000 you can see then you will see the drastic change uh, or you can see the change that is uh, you, you can find the beta elevators will be more fe- maybe more feasible option for us because uh, uh, right now both the things are uh, same so you can tr- try it yourself and calculate this uh, similar way that will give you more uh, insights about this so i hope this is clear now these are personal wishes to future for so I, I think we have solved this type of question so we should not okay we'll move to another question do we have time or see We'll take some short questions. Uh, actually, I have because I don't think much time is left. So there are any of the long questions. So I see the oh okay. Let's see this question. It says a company has a uh, let's name it as a question number six. It says a company has to replace a present facility after fifteen years uh, on outlay of uh, rupees five lakhs. It uh, plans to deposit an equal amount at the end of every year for the next 15 years and at an interest rate of 18 percent compound annually find the equivalent amount that must be deposited at the end of end of every year for the next 15 years use the equal payment series by the sinking fund formula now uh, the whatever the formula that we were using till now it's called sinking fund formula so that's nothing different you just not don't need to confuse about it what's it what is it so initial investment was given five five lakhs and time period is 15 years i is 18 percent and a we need to calculate similarly in the this question again 
if you will draw the time value of money on the, this will be the opposite side because we, we are giving a uh, from the opposite side like we are uh, present facility after 15 years we have to calculate okay that's why we are just drawing it this way so zeroth year we have to calculate this is 15th year so that's around five lakh rupees uh, that will be an a let's say the equal uh, payment series one two three four interest rate is 18 percent that will be a a a so it says the equal if you can see this question if you use equal payments that's why we are not considering the compounding so now if we calculate the a a will be f i into i to the power one plus i one plus i to the power n minus one that will be so yeah sorry I made a mistake f into a by f i to the power n i by i and i and n if you will see this this will that means you need to just uh, multiply the, these things uh, like we we have know the interest rate now if you were to uh, annualization factor if you want to calculate that's the same formula that's i that's i plus one to the power n i plus one plus i to the power n minus one so that's the same formula that we have used for the crf in the previous questions just remember that go through and just show it to you Yeah, this one. I into one plus I into one plus so this will be equal to the same formula we, we are using here. So you don't need to confuse about what it's I'm just writing into the mathematical terms. So we'll calculate this uh, and multiply it by the values given. So multiplication. So A will be F we know that's given is five lakh rupees. If you will calculate this whole thing, it comes out to be zero point zero one six four. A will be equal to eight thousand two hundred rupees. So that that means the amount of months deposited at the end of every year till the next uh, fifteen years will be equal to eight thousand. 500 here. Yeah. Is it clear? So this is the small questions that you can uh, have uh, from yourself. If you're finding any difficulties, you can uh, take it for the practice purpose. And also one fun announcement that I wanted to make. Uh, this uh, Saturday from 8 to 9 p.m. we are having an interaction with the Professor Rangam Energy live at the uh, and th this Saturday you will uh, get the mail soon. So for that we are floating a form Google form on the NPDL itself. You just fill uh, you till now whatever the queries that you have uh, that you are, I might not be able to solve in the theory part. You can put that queries into the Google form that professor will be interacting you with as a live. Uh, he will answer the all the queries available uh, that you will fill in that form. So that uh, form you, you will get through that uh, by, by a mail. OK. If uh, everything is done or you don't have any doubt, you just close the session.